Here's a common challenge for technicians setting up network cameras or network DVRs. So let's say you're at an office or a client site and you're going to connect your laptop to try to connect to a camera or to a DVR to get it set up or to connect to it and service it. You're told that the IP address of the camera is 192.168.2.164. So you're probably the first thing you want to do is try to connect to it via its web browser. So let's go ahead and do that by clicking on Internet Explorer. So we're going to bring up Internet Explorer and we'll see first of all that it doesn't connect to the Internet, which is a little bit of a problem, but you still might be able to connect to it. So why don't we go ahead and try to connect to 192.168.2.164. So we're going to click OK. All right, so now we have a bigger problem. We can't connect to it via its web interface. So something's going on here. What we can do now is we could try to use our command. So we're going to go to our command prompt and we could ping it. So let's see if we ping it. All right, so that's failing, have a problem there. The next step we could do is we could check our networking configurations. All right, so something's going on here that's interesting. You'll see that it's giving an IP address of 169.254, etc. This 169 is a very important clue or indicator of what's going on and this relates to using DHCP or dynamic IP addresses. So most laptops, whether personal or business, tend to be defaulted to DHCP and that's fine because it'll just dynamically give you an IP address and you generally don't need to worry about it. However, when you go into someone else's network or network without this, as you might have with an IP camera, you won't be connected to anything. You just won't be able to communicate with any other computer. So we're going to have to do something to resolve having this dynamic IP address, which is just nothing right now, right? Nothing's been assigned. So what we can do here is we can go and check our network connections. And on Windows 7, if you type in network connections, you'll see an option for view network connection. So let's pull this up. And we're looking at it as our local error network. This is our, you can see the uh, RJ45 here. This is sort of our Ethernet connection. And we're going to click through here and we'll see our properties and we'll go to Internet Protocol version 4. And you'll see here that it says obtain an IP address automatically. So, right, so this is dynamic. So the problem here is, is that we are in dynamic, but we're not getting a dynamic IP address. So what we're going to do is we're going to temporarily put in a static IP address. And so the network or the camera that we're trying to spe uh, speak to or communicate is on 192.168.2. Now, if you're going to use this for more than just a few minutes, it's probably good to ask the customer, the customer's IT representative, what IP address that you can use. Uh, but for sake of argument, we're just going to go ahead and use uh, .10 here. And we'll fill in the rest. Okay, and again, you probably get this from the local IT representative. We're going to go ahead and click OK. All right, OK, and OK again. And you're going to see here that the local area connection is now identifying, which means it's going into, it's connecting. So it's connected to an unidentified network, which should be OK. Let's go and take a look. All right, so we did IP config to check our IP configuration. And we didn't have, we just had 169 before. Now you see our IP address is 192.168.2.10. So this is a step in the right direction. We're now have a static IP address and it's on the same subnet as the camera itself. So why don't we go back now to Internet Explorer and do the same thing that we did before. So we're going to pull up Internet Explorer. Now here, since we're not connected to the public Internet, we're not going to be connected uh, out. So no web page, but that's okay because right now all we're concerned about is whether or not we can connect to the camera, this 192.168.2.164. So here's the moment of truth. If it works, we should be able to hit enter and we're gonna pull up the camera's web interface. And there you go, so you see here that uh, it's saying the server of this camera requires a username and password. We're gonna go ahead and use the defaults and it's gonna now load up and it's gonna connect to our camera. 
So now we have our camera or we basically have a scene and we can go in and do any type of setup that we would normally do or connect it to a VMS system. But that's the key things here. So let's recap here. Uh, often you're going to have uh, a dynamic IP address and that often won't work on someone else's network. You'll get this 169. Bad news. So what you'll need to do then is you'll need to go into your settings, go into the properties, find IPv4, and then instead of having an obtain an IP address automatically, which is for dynamic, you'll switch it over to use a static IP address, which will then allow you to connect to that camera that you weren't able to previously. Thank you.